So I have a quick tip for you. If you enjoy a good cup of coffee while you're out in the woods, but you don't want to go through the effort of using fresh roasted, fresh ground coffee, and you certainly don't want to use instant, then I may have the answer for you. If you're interested, keep watching. So what's the tip I'm going to share with you? Well, it's something I've been doing for a while at home. I just had not thought about using it in the woods, and that is cold brew coffee. So if you're familiar with cold brew coffee, basically you're, it's like making regular coffee except you're using cold water. It's like almost like making iced tea where you'd set it aside and put, or put it in the sun and let the tea steep out into the water. Very much the same process. You're actually just adding regular ground coffee to cold water, putting it aside for 12 to 24 hours, filtering out the grounds, and then you can have that cold concentrated coffee either cold with milk or ice or however you like it or add hot water and you've got a fresh cup of hot coffee so that's what i decided i was going to start trying to do out in the woods i've tried it a bit and i really quite enjoy it there is a little bit of a process that you have to do at home and that's what i'm doing today i'm getting ready to go for a hike tomorrow and i thought i'd share with you the process i use for making small quantities of cold brew coffee so i have my items set up on the counter i'll turn the camera around and i'll show you what i'm going to do Okay, to begin, there's a few things you're going to need in order to make this cold brew coffee at home. Obviously, the very first thing you're going to need is coffee. And the coffee I'm using today, and my preferred coffee these days, is the Rampage Coffee Company. And I do have a separate video on Rampage Coffee. Uh, I've tried all three of their roasts. The Cold Black, which is what I'm going to use today, as well as their Riot, which is their medium roast, and their C4, which is their caffeine-enhanced version. All three of them work for making the cold brew coffee. Personally, I prefer the dark roast, the cold black, because it just gives a little bit more body at the end process. And I'll tell you what I mean when I go along. Having said that, if what you're looking for is a real good shot of caffeine to get you going, either in the morning or in the middle of the afternoon or while you're on the trail, go for the C4. Or if you want, try a blend of all three coffees or any two of the three coffees to come up with your own unique flavor. So the cold black and the reason I like the cold black and is because well simply freshness counts and I don't think you can unless you roast your own which I do on occasion here at home unless you're roasting your own coffee I have not found a fresher coffee available and this is roasted one day shipped two days later arrived at my house three or four days after that it just doesn't get any fresher so that's what I'm going to be using is cold black coffee and I'll give you the recipe or the amounts in a minute You'll need some way of grinding your coffee down. And I'm going to be using a burr grinder, a small Hario burr grinder that I picked up. And I'm using this in, you could certainly use an electric grinder. There are two types of electric grinders, blade grinders with this little twirling blade, and then burr grinders, usually ceramic burr grinders that uh, uh, work slightly differently. I prefer a burr grinder for this process, and the reason is because the blade grinder, even if you just pulse it a few seconds, it's still going to result in some large grounds and some small, very fine, almost powdery grounds. With a burr grinder, you get an even size, pretty much. There is, tr yeah, there is a little bit of powder that goes with it, but get, you get pretty much an even size ground. Now, why is that important? Well, you're going to be filtering this out before you store it and take it out into the woods, and you want to get out as much of the coffee grounds as possible. So if you grind it a little larger than you might for your regular drip coffee maker that you're using at home, then you get less grounds in the end product. So I'll show you what the, the size of the grounds I'm using, but today, just because I'm doing a small quantity, I'm going to use the little hand grinder. What else do you need after that? You need some type of a container to put the ground coffee and the cold water in. Uh, it depends on the quantity you want to make. You can do as simple as a little mason jar. And here is the last serving of a batch that I made a few days ago. You can also use a French press. And a French press is absolutely legitimate for making cold brew, cold brew coffee at home. Uh, you could use a cloth filter of some type, and there are what's known as nut milk bags, which is a synthetic material that is food safe, that will keep all the grounds out of your water or your end product, the coffee, and then you'd be able, it makes it easier to dispose of the grounds afterwards, and that's a viable alternative. I don't have any of those right now, so I, I won't be using that. So today, actually, I'm going to be using the French press and just showing you how. If you really start to enjoy cold brew coffee, either served cold or served hot, you may want to invest 
in a professionally made or a commercially available cold brewer. And there's a few of those and one is known as Toady and I will put a link to a Toady on Amazon. I am not selling this, I'm not affiliated and I don't even own one, but this is one of the more popular cold brew coffee makers available. So just to give you an example of what, what is available out there. There are any number of ways you can make cold brew coffee and I'm going to leave it to you to do a little research on cold brew just to see what it's all about. I'm going to show you the method I use. Now, when you're finished brewing your coffee and basically the process is as simple as putting your ground coffee in a container, putting in your water, putting it aside somewhere either in the fridge or on the counter somewhere 12 to 24 hours, then straining the coffee away from the ground. Then you have to, of course, you have to store it somehow. Now, if you're at home, you can leave it in a mason jar, leave it in the fridge. It's good for up to two weeks in the fridge. If you're taking it with you in the woods, then you're going to have one to store it in something else. I have two ways of storing the coffee. It depends on how much I'm going to take with me and how much coffee I'm going to drink while I'm out. If I'm on, you know, a couple of day trip, I might use a small stainless steel water bottle like this. This is actually a little larger than I probably would like to use, but it just happens to be the smallest water bottle I have. And I could fill it up as much or as little coffee as this in this as I want. You're going to have to measure out how much you're going to use after the fact, but you know, it's perfectly legitimate to take a small water bottle like this and put your cold brew concentrate in. The other item is, and this is really convenient, is this is an empty, one of those five hour energy drink containers. They're food safe to start with, of course, and they hold two ounces. Now what's nice about that is two ounces of concentrate with six ounces of water gives you an eight ounce cup of coffee. So that's all I need is one of these to make a single cup of coffee. So if I have two of these, and I'm out for the day and all I'm really probably going to have is two cups of coffee. Two of these are perfect. They, uh, you know, just pour it in, seal it up, drop it in a bag to, you know, they don't leak. They're quite strong, but just to make sure. And then you can just grab one of these and put it in your cup, pour your hot water on top, and you're good to go with a nice hot cup of hot coffee. All right, what else do you need? Actually, that's it. Well, some way of measuring your coffee. So let's talk about that right now. So how much coffee am I going to use? Well, I have a measuring cup here. And it depends on how strong you want to make your concentrate. And I've done a little research into what is recommended for home brew, cold brew coffee at home. And you can make it with either a three to one or a four to one ratio. So what does that mean? Well, I'm using a three to one ratio just because I like the strength that it gives me and it allows me to make my cup of coffee a little stronger. So I'm going to be using one half cup measured coffee beans. And then I'm going to be putting a cup and a half of water in the container with that ground coffee. And then when I'm finished, it'll give me not quite a cup and a half of liquid. Of course, some of it's going to remain behind in the grounds. And then that cup and a half of liquid is what I can then pour into my coffee cup, adding the hot water too. So very simple. Now, if you want to go with a four to one ratio, easy enough. One half cup of coffee, ground coffee, two two cups of water and that'll give you the four to one ratio. I would recommend that you experiment with it and see what works best for you. So this is all a learning process. It is for me and I'm sure it will be for you unless you've been making cold coffee all along is what works best. Okay, I'm going to set up in a second and show you my process. We'll put it together and then we'll, of course we'll wrap the video up. A few thoughts on cold brewed coffee served hot. I enjoy a couple of cold brewed coffee on a hot day, pour it over ice, you don't have to add sugar and milk unless that's your preference. I like it just the way it is, pour it over ice. Of course, that's not going to be an option for me in the woods, but even mixing it with a little cold water, it still tastes pretty good. If you add hot water to it, you get a nice hot cup of coffee, but it is different than regular brewed coffee. So when I make coffee the normal way, often with the AeroPress or a French press or some type of pour over device using the cold black, I get a nice, rich, strong flavor from the coffee. When you cold brew it, you still get all the strength and all the flavor, but there's a subtle difference. What's missing in the cold brew is the acidity that would be in the coffee if it was hot brewed. So it's a matter of how do you like it? So it's, it's going to be different. And that's what the only warning I'll give you is don't expect it to be exactly the same as if you had made a hot cup of coffee from the scratch that when you use cold brew concentrate and then add hot water, it is slightly different. Some people prefer it. I enjoy it. I just know that it's a little bit different. And how much water to coffee ratio are you going to use? That's also an experiment. I use right now two ounces of cold brew concentrate and six ounces of water, giving me the eight ounce cup. You know, you might vary that a little bit more water, a little bit less water. Depends on how you like your coffee, I guess. 
All right, let's make some coffee. Okay, here's my Code Black coffee. Let's open that up. <laughs> the difference freshness makes. Sorry for the noise, the crinkle of the Mylar bag. This is in. That's way too much. Still a little bit much. Put a few more things back in. Yeah, looks good. Put my coffee aside. I'm going to try and show you. Look at the dark, rich, oily flavor that the Code Black has on it. May not be your cup of coffee or what you like to drink, but man, this is like black gold to me. Pour it in my grinder. And because this takes a couple of minutes, I'll start grinding. I'll cut away and I'll bring it back when I'm finished. Okay, I wanted to show you the grind of the coffee so you get an idea just how coarse I've left it. It doesn't have to be super fine for this to work. It's just a matter of how long it's going to be in contact with the water. And the advantage of leaving a little bit coarse like this means it's just that much easier to filter out. So that would be the same coarseness of coffee that I would use if I was using the French press filter because of course the mesh filter on the French press doesn't like very, very, very fine coffee, not like a paper filter does. So I'll put that in my French press along with the rest of the ground coffee. And I'm going to add two cups of cold tap water. Now I suppose I could have used spring water or bottled water, uh, but it's cold tap water. We have good quality water here in Halifax, so I don't. There is a flavor on it. There is a difference, but it's not it's not offensive. It's not something that uh, is unpalatable. Now, it's as simple as I have a spoon. I'm just going to stir it in gently, just to make sure all the coffee is in contact with the water, and that's it. That's all I have to do. I am going to put a piece of saran wrap over that. Alternatively, I guess I could have taken the filter off just so the wood lid was on. And I'm just going to put that aside on the corner of the counter. 12 to 24 hours later, I'll come back. I'll use the French press to press the grounds to the bottom and pour my coffee into whatever it is I'm storing it in. All right, so let's finish this video up by making a cup of coffee. All right, my water is boiling. I have my coffee cup. It's my favorite coffee cup. It was a gift from my daughter. I have my cold brew that I have made previously. Now remember this is a concentrate, so uh, it's not, you, you could drink it straight up, but it's gonna be very strong and very highly caffeinated. Add in some hot water. Till I get about eight ounces, that looks good. Oh, very nice. Okay, let's wrap this video up. Oh yeah, good cup of coffee. So cold brewed, served hot. Just another tip that I wanted to share with you on how you can enjoy a nice cup of coffee in the woods. This is meant for those times when you don't want to carry fresh coffee with you and then have to go through the process of grinding it while you're in the woods and using whatever device it is you like to make your coffee with. And you certainly don't want to use instant coffee, but you want to enjoy a nice cup of coffee give this a try. It may be something that you'll enjoy for yourself. I'm enjoying using the Rampage coffee, the Code Black today. It's, it's great fresh coffee, but you can try whatever coffee you have right now. You may want to try the Rampage coffee because I think you'll enjoy that as well. Okay, that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed this video, you may consider subscribing to my channel. Make sure to hit the notification button. And if you have any comments on this or anything else you'd like to see on this channel, please put them in the comments section below. But until next time, Get out and explore and take that path less traveled. It'll make all the difference. Bye for now.